Today I want to share with you what I think is the biggest and also most common mistake when people talk about innovation. Either this is in university, in a startup program or in corporate innovation. You might have heard before that 95% of all your behavior is steered by your subconscious mind. Thus, the subconscious mind has a huge impact on your creativity and also your potential to innovate. In this video, I will explain how you can use your subconscious mind to your advantage to create big and meaningful ideas that can change the life of many people. At the end of this video, I will give you actionable tips to use your subconsciousness to achieve just that effortlessly. So make sure to stick around until the end of this video because I can guarantee you that you will learn a lot. So you might want to start your own business or you work in an innovation department of a large company. But neither you nor your colleagues have big breaks or ideas. The problem that I see a lot is that people treat innovation as a conscious process. But innovation is anything but conscious. For example, in an innovation workshop, there's typically less than one or two hours for the inspiration and idea generation phase. But in reality, this phase oftentimes starts many years before someone has a great innovative idea. Corporate innovation managers, but also many startup founders, seem to make the same mistake as authors of self-help books. They assume that their readers are essentially ready for success and simply need to take some easy steps to overcome their hurdles. In the same way, participants of an innovation workshop are expected to be ready to innovate, no matter how their subconscious mind has been influenced in the past. And I think this is a huge mistake. So if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, my name is Felix and my channel is all about the secrets of successful innovators and people who dare to change the world. So if this interests you, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. So the first thing people need to understand is that the basis for innovation is inventory. Our subconscious mind is influenced by everything we hear, watch, read or experience. Every time you check your Instagram or read the news, you influence your subconscious mind, which again influences most of your thoughts and decisions. Therefore, you should be super cautious what you let into your world. All this information that you gather over many years form connections and create structures in your brain. You get a glimpse of these internal structures of your brain when you just let go and do a free association exercise. For example, you start with the word telephone and you might continue with iPhone, Apple, fruit, lemonade, liquid, ocean and so forth. It will look like this chain of thoughts. Another association exercise would be to always come back to the original word in order to make the connections going out from a single word visible. For example, you start with the word sun and you continue with heat, sunburn, solar power, newspaper. You could do this for several minutes until you would run out of connected words. It would look like this mind map. For many people, remembering and creativity seem like opposite processes. But the idea that they are one and the same is actually quite old. The Latin root inventio is the basis for the English word inventory, but also for the word invention. When we dig deeper and look at the early lives of great innovators, they typically spend their whole youth and early adulthood reading hundreds of books and absorbing knowledge like a sponge. As a child, Bill Gates spent thousands of hours reading, for example, he once read the whole World Book Encyclopedias. And what have Bill Gates and Elon Musk in common? It's not only a huge bank account. When Musk was in his fourth grade, he read the whole Encyclopedia Britannica from start to finish. But wouldn't that be a big waste of time? I mean, how much can you really remember when you read a whole lexicon? Probably not much. And Musk and Gates aren't any super brains either that still can remember everything that they read in the fourth grade. But memory is a paradox. It takes knowledge to gain knowledge. The better any new piece of information is embedded into our web of information that we already know, the more likely it is to be remembered. The more we remember, the better we are at processing the world. And the better we are at processing the world, the more we can remember about it. The information capacity of the human brain is probably bigger than all the information stored on the internet. But most of it is not accessible for us in a conscious manner. It's like when you try to find information on the internet, but you don't know of a proper search term to find them. 
This is the knowledge that is stored in the subconscious mind. It might not be easily accessible, but it still can form unique connections that can create insights. And the more unrelated and broad our knowledge is, the more unique will be our ideas, analogies and eventually our innovations. Therefore, even the knowledge that you seem to have forgotten serves you in indirect ways. It will help you to better connect new information and therefore remember new stuff much easier, but it will also help you to form unique connections and create deep insights. The second thing you need to understand is the power of the anchoring effect. You might have heard before that anchoring is used in sales and marketing a lot as a tool to boost revenues. For example, anchoring is used every time when you see a normal price and next to it a discounted price. The normal high price acts as the anchor and everything that is lower as the initial price seems like a bargain. Duke University researcher Dan Ariely showed in a study that random numbers like the last two digits of the participants social security numbers or any random number if you will can have a profound effect on what people are willing to pay for something totally unrelated. In the experiment, the researcher showed products, for example, an expensive looking bottle of wine to a random group of people. First, the participants had to look at the last two digits of their social security number. Then they were asked if they would pay that amount of money in US dollars for the product. Lastly, they have been asked openly what they be willing to pay for the product. The result, the group with high last two digits was willing to pay three times the price for the same bottle of wine as the group with low last two digits. The message is simple. The number you see first has a huge effect on how you assess a situation. For example, when you determine your willingness to pay for a product. And you would do this comparison with the initial value completely subconsciously. But the famous anchoring effect does not only work with numbers. That's why it can also be used beyond sales and marketing. Stanford researcher Justin Berg showed in an experiment that anchoring can also influence the novelty and usefulness of new ideas. It's quite common in workshops which have the goal to generate new ideas for innovations that examples are shown at the beginning of the session to inspire the participants. These examples also act as anchors. Research has shown that the more original and novel such examples, the more creative will be the ideas of the participants of the innovation workshop. The more familiar and useful such examples, the more applicable and useful the ideas of the participants will be. Justin Berg calls this phenomenon the novelty usefulness trade-off. To overcome this trade-off, he suggests starting with original ideas first by showing participants novel and creative ideas as anchors and later infuse the resulting ideas with examples or guiding questions to focus on the usefulness. In short, it is easier to make a crazy idea useful than it is to make an unoriginal but useful idea original. Another approach to overcome this novelty usefulness trade-off would be to foster analogical thinking, for example by using patterns. So how does analogical thinking with patterns work? A famous example of a pattern for business model innovation would be the peer-to-peer -peer platform pattern. By showing the participants famous peer-to-peer -peer platforms such as Airbnb, they might start thinking about their own industry and connect the peer-to-peer -peer platform logic with elements and particularities of their own industry. By using analogies as inspiration, you work with and not against the non-linear and associative nature of your brain. Your subconscious mind will surprise you with new ideas and unique connections that you would never have expected. But to have the strongest effect on our creativity, it is best to identify patterns by ourselves. Because when we discover new patterns, we create positive, exciting emotions that strengthen these newly formed connections. These exciting ideas get stuck much better and therefore our subconscious mind will deal with them much more intensively and for a longer period of time, which leads to a stronger anchoring and development of these ideas. So how can you put all this into action? Remember, your subconscious mind does not only influence your creativity, it is actually where all your ideas and insights are coming from. Always be careful what media you consume and what information you let into your head. Try to learn as much as you can. You first need to build your inventory before you can become an innovator. Trust your subconscious mind. 
that it will link all these different kinds of information in meaningful ways. Whenever you use examples for inspiration, for yourself or to inspire others, just keep in mind the power of the anchoring effect. Be also in mind that it's always easier to go from a crazy idea to an applicable idea than it is the other way around. Apply analogical thinking, since it uses the power of the nonlinear structures of your brain and therefore is your best chance to create novel but also useful ideas. I exclusively focused on the early stages of the innovation process, but I truly believe that the influence of the subconscious mind is even bigger in the later stages when people test and execute their ideas. So I plan to do future videos on this topic as well. So if you're interested in this, please subscribe to my channel. But for now, uh, let me know in the comments what is your approach to create big and meaningful ideas. And how do you build your inventory for innovation? What do you read? What do you learn? Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.